Hi gamers, SFG here. We're taking another look at Shadows of Forbidden Gods and this time we're looking at another mod god. In this instance, we're looking at the Living Void. Now, I'm super... I really like the thematics of this god. Um, and I've played with it a few times actually. I struggled at first. I think that uh, the mod creator, who is Ural... Hold on, I always struggle to say this. Urav Ulf. <laughs> Urav Ulf. <laughs> Difficult for me to say that name. <laughs> He'll be popping up on screen in a second. But uh, he, she, apologies I haven't asked their sex yet, or their gender rather. Um, they, let's just call them, have created this god. Uh, it's a mod god, you can get it right now on the Steam Workshop. And it's, I love the thematics of it. It's quite difficult in my experience, although I believe that the, the creator has actually made the god a little bit easier, given it some additions that make it a fair bit easier. And I'll, I'll talk about those. I've, I'm sure they have. I've checked the Discord and I'm pretty sure I saw them suggesting to another poster there that they've, they've made some changes to make it a little bit easier, a little bit more linked to the other key mechanics of the game. So really, really enjoyable. Uh, the main reason I'm particularly keen to cover this god is just look at it. Limb Void, it's so Lovecraftian. This is Lovecraft 101, right? We'll read the the, the you know the words in a second, but this is so Lovecraft it hurts. I think this is actually more Lovecraftian than most of the base gods, maybe excluding Iasta. I, I think that's probably it. Maybe open him to a degree, but yeah, you know, it's this is serious Lovecraft, guys. So let's let's have a look at this now, game. This what this, what the score is. So beneath our world, there is another another realm, one of darkness, emptiness, the ultimate void. Our entire reality wants to collapse into the abyss the same way a ball wants to roll downhill. It just needs a little push. Love it. So that's super Lovecraftian, right? Ultimately, humanity is ruined. It's almost irrelevant. And everything just wants to collapse into nothingness. Lovecraft 101. So the living void is a plane of existence that resides in a lower energy state than our world. Its gameplay relies on creating anchors in the world accomplished by planting void stones in infiltrated places. We'll talk about this in a bit. As your seals break and you get a foothold in the world, these void stone anchors become rifts in reality, and then wounds, and lastly you can spill forth from these ruptures and collapse the entire world into your realm. I love it, I love the art, art by Stuart Stafford in this case, love this. Love everything about this god, I've got to be honest. There's not many gods I dislike in this game, <laughs> none really, <laughs> and the mod gods just as much, but I particularly, I like all the mod gods, I've got to be honest, Ix, this probably is up there for me as, as the so far um probably by a slight edge my favorite mod god but this thematically is fantastic so let's have a look at the gameplay now details and mechanics so the living voids mechanics revolve around void stones and using them to siphon things from the world so what happens is you get these void stones your agents have got to go to the great wound which is effectively the tomb and they lose two health they do a challenge takes one turn and they basically give themselves to that realm, like that, that void realm. And then what they get back is a hidden, something called a hidden void stone. You can use those void stones then to either plant them in infiltrated human settlements or to give them to individual individuals, so rulers, um, heroes, those sorts of characters. Humans, I think you can give them to other things as well, but let's just assume for now it's the, the human characters, so rulers and heroes. And it makes them more vulnerable to other things you can do to them. Okay. Very early in the game, you then get access to this power that turns a hidden void stone at a location into a hungry rift, okay? And that's when things get a bit dicey. I wouldn't recommend doing it straight away. I'd probably wait a few... I wait about 100 turns before I uh, open them when I'm doing better. Uh, or I think that's about maybe 50 to 100 turns. Because what happens is they become suddenly everybody knows what they are. They see these hungry rift and the heroes and the rulers, they try and stop it. So, void stones planted in the ground can be activated with one of your powers into Hungry Rifts. Agents, it's three power. Agents can perform challenges to expand them to maturity, but heroes can perform quests to try and close them, making it preferable to focus on one rift at a time. So you want to, don't spread your agents too thin, or do this too many times because the heroes will close it down, and close them down, right, and you'll get nothing for them. The presence of shadow in Geomantic Loci can also make expanding a rift easier. So that's, I think, one of the new things that the developer, the mod developer has added here. So he is added this ability for shadow to make it harder for the heroes to close the rift and i think it also makes it easier to expand the rift with your agents which is great once you've expanded a hungry rift or done this challenge it gets it to 300 percent modifier it turns into a um oh what's it called then a living no not a living void what's it called it's not called a vacuum collapse either 
Oh, well, we'll get to it when we get to it. But it turns into this other modifier that's basically like a blank space on the map now, right? And then you could do other powers from it that are pretty devastating. And obviously, once you awake, and I believe you can start sucking the world into those um, vacuum collapsed areas. So when you awaken, you can begin plunging the world into the living void through the Great Wound, as well as Hungry Rifts expanded to maturity. Ah, it's called a Mature Rift, that's it. A Mature Rift, I think it's called. This costs enormous amounts of power to accomplish, but the more footholds you have, the more power you get in return for you from the terrain you consume. So basically, from what I gather is, you, and I haven't got this fire by the way, but you get a mature rift, or a number of mature rifts hopefully, you then start ex collapsing the world into them. The more of the world you collapse, the more power you get, the more you can do it, the more power you get, the more you can do it, the more you can do it, and then eventually you snowball right, and you suck the whole world into your void realm, and then you win. Right? Sounds easy. Now, as I say, you've got to be careful because void stones are hidden when you put them at a location. Once you do this hungry, they become, once you turn them into hungry rifts, suddenly everybody can see them and everyone wants to stop them. And the heroes and ruler, rulers rather, will place things called reality anchors that stop the growth of these rifts naturally. So you have to actively use your agents. You basically need a lore agent dedicated to getting them to maturity. Once they mature to the maturity though, they are, I don't think they can be closed and they just sit there being a terrible thing. So that's where you want to get to. Now let's start the game real quick. And I'll just show you the couple of first pairs here. We'll do a random world, all this will be the same. Let's quickly show you a world here. Turn off in, so then I'll cut to do a save that I have. So what I'm going to show you real quick is, I'm going to skip through a few turns, but we're going to do nothing from something. I'll show you how you gain a hit a void stone. So we'll do that here with our supplicant. I'll show you, look at the, I love this artwork by the way. Look at that face, so sinister. Not sure how he manages to pass for a normal person, but there we are. I'll show you the um, traits, here they are now. So we've got Dimensional Insights, which is the one I tend to go for. Increases lore by one for every void stone carried. This scales perfectly right with obviously the... When you're making a Hungry Rift, a Mature Rift, the more lore, the quicker you do the challenge. So really beneficial to get this one. This is the one I recommend. First time I did it, I went for this instead, Collapsing Body. Upon death, creates a Hungry Rift modifier with 100% charge in its location if it's eligible. Each level of the agent increases its charge by 20%. So if the max level agent, 10, you'll create a max level Hungry Rift. It will immediately become a Mature Rift, right? The negative, of course, of that is you've got to sacrifice a very high level agent to do so. The other negative is, it will only happen, like it says, if it's eligible. So I don't believe this will work if you do it at a location with a hidden void stone. I've not tested it but I suspect not and it certainly won't happen if there's already a hungry rift there. Now here's the irony, a lot of your agents, particularly your supplicant because he's got decent law, tends to be working at those locations so it's possible they die and you just waste this. So be careful if you take this, you've got to make sure you leg it from heroes and die somewhere you want to die. <laughs> well you want them to die rather, you know what I mean. And then Entropic Presence, not tried this one, but this will scale well with some of the other tactics that God can try with regards to just devastation. So, when in a human settlement, increase devastation by 3% per turn. You get no menace for that, it just happens. And that scales well. There's a couple of powers that increase devastation as well, so I think this guy is all about destruction, well, sucking things into the void, shadow, destruction, and a little bit of madness flavour. But the madness, I think personally, is the weakest element of this god. But this I can see scaling well with some of the other powers. That you'll see later. So we'll pick Dimension Insights, I'll get a Void Stone. I'm not going to bother getting an Agent because like I'll cut to another save in a second. But I'll just show you what you do here. So let's skip a few turns, take all. Supplicate completes nothing from something. The Agent collapses as holes appear across their body. Flesh scooped away inside and out, oh my word. Before them is a small and twisting stone hovering in the air, inimical to our world. Nice. So we'll take that, we'll do it again. He's leveled up. Take us some intrigue. Take another one, thank you guess the same. There we are. So now what we can do is go to a village. Infiltrate the sub the village real quick. 30 turns. What is it? Oh, it's a capital. Silly. Right, we'll go to this village rather. Infiltrate that. 15 turns. I prefer that. So we'll infiltrate this village and then I'll show you you can drop them. Um, and then I'll show you the powers once you break a seal because you get some powers pretty quick with this card. I'll dismiss that. Dismiss that. Right. So we'll have a look at the powers now. Just the early game powers. So Three, Enervate is the first one. You get this, one power, their eyes droop and their arms slacken. They shamble like corpses, hardly able to support their own weight. No practitioner of medicine, however skilled, can identify the cause. So it reduces the hero's might to one, though again one might every turn until restored to normal. I couldn't for the life of me work out what the point of this was, getting it first, because you're not gonna use 
right? You're not gonna... You don't want to be fighting heroes on turn one. You don't really want to be fighting heroes until sort of the mid to late game at the earliest, in my opinion. So I was like, what's this for? Why is it giving us this? What it doesn't say there is it also works on... Let me see if we've got any I can call on. There it is. Works on Orc Up Starts as well. So if you want to use Orc um, Warlords, this, it would reduce his might to 1, then the next turn it would be 2, then the next turn it would be 3. So you do this on a, when you're about to attack and kill them basically, and I think this is the primary use of this power. To reduce their might, kill them with your Warlord, take their banner, unite the Orcs, and then you can start doing this 2 pronged Orc and Devastation attack if you want. Otherwise, I wouldn't use it until the mid-game. You know, you don't want to be engaging heroes early on because it's going to get you a lot of profile menace and it's going to spike that world panic, okay? You also have Consume Heat. This is what I've just unlocked, one of the pairs I've just unlocked. What this does is um, it reduces the temperature at a location where there's a hidden void stone, right? So you've got to infiltrate a location, put the void stone there, then you can cast this, it reduces the temperature. It only works at that specific location, no adjacent locations or anything, right? And as it says there, warmer locations are more heavily affected. All the sun's light is pulled underground, warming nothing as it passes through streets, earth, stone, and finally into the living void itself. Nice. Now, I, I've i tested this a little bit, didn't get a massive amount of success with it, but I could see it could be good maybe at some um, desert locations or locations with really poor habitability. You could cast it there to try and make them a bit more habitable for your orcs, perhaps, um, or for some of your travelers, or maybe even a dark empire. Uh, perhaps, but I can't see. It takes a it takes a good four or five power to actually take like a. Oh, I have, don't have any. Oh, we do. Let's have a look. No, we don't have any human civilizations at snowy areas. But it takes a lot of power to get them to sort of become a level where they're so frozen. The uh, populations drop in. Can be good as a time with orcs, I guess, if you're going for a military route. But apart from that, um, I don't think it's the most powerful. My favourite power is this. Uh, these three, by far, rising void, right? Beneath their feet, the stone sings, pulling the night sky down to the world of man. So it begins to enshadow the target settlement for 25 turns. Each infiltrated point of interest boosts the effect. So per infiltrated point of interest, I believe you get two. So you infiltrate a village, for example, you cast it once, you'll get 50 shadow. Cast it again, you'll get 100 shadow. Assuming nobody interferes, okay? You want to be casting this quite a bit on locations. I think it's, I think this is the best power, by far, for the, um, for the early game. The only negative about this is it needs those void stones. So you see you're going to be using a lot of agents, grabbing your void stones from the Great Wound. And if this is miles away from where you want to be in shadowing, you've got to walk all the way over there, infiltrate it, drop the shadow, drop the void stone, then you can start using it again. It's also worth bearing in mind that because it affects, you know, shadow, it spreads across adjacent locations. You're better doing it at points where they've got a lot of interconnected locations. You don't want to be doing it somewhere where it's not going to spread very well. Right? Nor do you want to be doing it somewhere where there might be a blocker, like a plane, right? or an orc camp where the shadow ain't going to spread any further. So use this wisely, but I think it's a very, very, it just gives you such freedom because you're not no longer reliant on cities to cause um, shadow or the elder team, obviously, because of the great wound, forgive me. But it does give you a bit of a, a variation there. We're going to skip ahead a few more turns here just until I can. whatever. We've done that now. Now I'll just quickly plant the void stone. I'll show you this. Five turns. There we are. Plant the void stone. We've got some more seals. We'll have a look at these later. As you can see here, we've got modifiers, hidden void stone. Right now, we can use these powers: consume heat or rising void. Don't look at the other ones. We'll do them later. So this has got rising void. Now this will slowly in shadow the area, which I really, really like. So let's cut. What I'll do is, I'll, as always, I'll cut back to the mid-game and I'll show you a bit of gameplay there. Then I'll cut back to the... If anything interesting happens, I'll cut back to that. But then I'll finally cut back to the end game. I'll show you how I got on. I'll tell you what the strategies I think would work well with this god. The things that I like about the god. The things that I think could be improved. And then we'll close the video. We'll uh, see you in a second. Hi gamers. So we're in the mid-game-ish. We're at turn 210 as you can see there. And I've got 7 out of 8 power. I've got quite a few of the seals. 7 out of 9. Another one's going to break in 65 turns. Just wanted to sort of jump in here and show the game state. So what we're looking at. So we've got 
a fair, I'm doing pretty well this game, to be honest guys. We've got a 35% victory as you can see, 52% world panic, that's a minimum from the guard. Um, we've got a decent amount of shadow spread, it does keep getting pushed back and I believe now it appears that you can't get pushed back, sorry it can still get pushed back even when it's at 100 which is curious. So even at 100% shadow it'll still get pushed back which is uh, a, a good change, a much more challenging change. Uh, but using this guard as we said earlier, you can use the hidden void stones, you can drop on them. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do one here because this one needs one. Rising Void, and it will enshadow the area regardless of what it is. 2%, we need to get that sorted, oh my word, lazy. Let's do a Rising Void there. So these are slowly increasing in shadow, not shadow stuff around them. Yeah, that's not really a And that's pretty much what I've been doing to this point. Now, I think I'm at the point where I need to think about opening one of the, um, the Void Stones, uh, the Hidden Void Stones up. So let's just take a look at this, I'll show you these powers here. I did record a little bit with this, but it was pretty pointless. It was a bit of a filler. <laughs> Me just saying, this is the power I got. I'm going to do it in 100 turns, which is a bit silly. So I thought I'd do the 100 turns and cut back, which is where I'm at now. So we have seen Innovate, Consume Heat, and Rising Void. Path of Destruction is a power where uh, it increases devastation. So you need a hero or a ruler carrying a void stone to do this. Um, at their location and for 25 turns that increase the devastation. Heroes receive menace and rulers will generate unrest. Uh, the effects grow strong with additional void stones held. So what I would like here is to know A, how much just devastation they cause and B, um, how much menace rulers gain and how much unrest it also causes for the rulers. I'd also like to know how much stronger it becomes if they got more void stones. I haven't seen a use for this yet. I find it not difficult but just kind of I guess tedious slash I see more benefit in putting void stones at locations and getting the shadow than I think I do putting them on people and doing things like this. This would obviously work well if I had to pick the other supplicant power that scales devastation, right? You could just cause some serious devastation. Um, but base, mm, maybe if you're using a lot of war focus this would be quite good, but again, I think as base this doesn't fit into the most... My standard style of play is a bit more intrigue focused and I think if you're that way inclined, uh, devastation is something you sort of as a, a scalpel, right? Just to chop bits that you think need chopping, i.e., the, the villages and so on, um, rather than just have it sporadic. But still, this is a cool power, I like this. Then you've got a road mine, I think this is fairly weak. I've tried this quite a bit, and it increases, um, as you can see, that the living void feeds upon not just the material but the material as well. Slowly, the souls of its carriers degrade into their lowliest form. So for each void stone a hero really carries at least 5 sanity and 50 experience. If they have at least one stone, they also lose any special traits, just mediator, light bringer, etc, etc, etc. Um, now this can be good. This can be good, you can remove like a pesky mediator, but bear in mind they can pick that trait up again and sometimes it could be in your disadvantage. You might remove like an orc slayer and suddenly become a mediator and they're a lot more potent against your particular tactic. So do be aware of that. 5 sanity for me is pointless, it should be increased. Um, 50 experience is nice, but I think the sanity there should be higher to make it have a purpose, right? Um, and I'm, again, is it per? Yeah, for each. So it'd be 10 if they had to, 15 if they had three, but that, again, it doesn't feel that powerful. Two health, the time, the investment of getting in, blah, blah, blah. The menace and profile for doing so. I'm not convinced that's a great spend. I think it could be increasing that to seven, maybe even 10, I don't think it'd be the end of the world, on the sanity. Then you've got Open Rift, which is how you make your hidden void stones turn into Hungry Rift. So the stone shoots into the sky, the varying earth construction as it does. It opens and unravels, hanging midair, waiting for more to consume. So you get this cool black hole, right? Um, I got this like 100 turns ago. I haven't used it since, as I said at the start of this section of the video. And what it does, it converts a hidden void stone modifier into a Hungry Rift. Now the problems with Hungry Rifts is they're vulnerable, right? Heroes can close them, as it says. Um, agents can enlarge them, but heroes can close them, and also there's a passive thing that causes problems called uh, reality anchors, and mm, they're tr fairly troublesome as well. However, we're going to do this soon, I think, so I'm at a stage where I can get away with it. You've got Gaze into the Void, which, um, let's read the text here, some say the orb of nothingness merely unnerves them, some say it sings for them, some say it shows them things to them, and some say it calls to them. Targets a world rupture and causes it to begin applying madness to adjacent locations to 25 turns. I'm curious, I thought that would be um, <laughs> Shadow, I'm curious. World ruptures are what Hungry Rifts turn into when they get to 300%, I believe. Surge in Darkness, these are all three powers you can see. 
Uh, okay, so we're heavily in shadows. Locations 25 turns from a world rupture. Those few who dare stand near the rupture see the world random, distort, brightening, and darkening. The light of the world is actually drawn into the living void. That's cool. And then drain warmth. So just unlock this as the world darkens and its energy drains, green and glowing, glowing at the first of suffering. Target a world rupture and cause it to drain the heat from adjacent locations 25 turns. Warmer locations are more heavily affected. Right? So this is all great, but what the only thing I think I've got a. <sighs> The only, I guess, complaint or the main complaint I suppose I have about this, and I'll do this when I do a proper summary as well, but it's that all the powers rely on either um, hidden voids, void stones, uh, void stones in people's inventories, heroes or rulers' inventories here, or hungry rifts. No, there's nothing that does on the hungry rift, is there? It's all the ruptures. So, yeah, world ruptures. So, I would like to see something that doesn't rely on these or maybe even helps them. Maybe something to increase the speed of the open, of the rift uh, power, as it were. Maybe something to even uh, in, in infiltrate the location, just to speed up dropping those uh, stones if you wanted. I mean, we've got Innovate, but it's, you know, it's one power out of all these, that, and the rest of them rely on something else to use. Uh, and again, I like, you, you know, I want to be using these things, but I wish there were some ways that the powers would lead into making those things easier and better to use, if that makes sense. Um, like, I'm trying to think of a simple one for me would be if you've got a void stone and you go to another, uh, a hungry, a hungry um, rift, maybe you can, like, sacrifice the void stone, sacrifice the power of the power here, and it increases the speed of which it run, uh, increases or something. Just something like that. Um... You know, make an infiltration power cost three, just to make it a bit more balanced or something. But give us something that does doesn't rely on this, basically. In case you really screw up and you lose it all, or you've got a problem. But let's. What we're going to do is, I think we're going to open this one. Are these all in shadow? I think they're less likely. Yeah, they are. So we're hoping they're less likely to try and close this. So we're going to open this hungry rift. Fifty percent. We need to speed up. It's going to start getting lower. And what I'm going to do, we can no longer look, we can no longer cast these powers on it. They, they won't let us anymore. Uh, because this is a hungry rift, not the funny power anyway. But if I did, I wouldn't be able to cast any of the consume heat or rising void powers, which is the problem. Or, yeah, well, obviously these two don't work, but rising void or consume heat, you can't cast it on this, which is a bit of an issue because those powers are awesome, right? Which is what in incentivizes you, if you like, to. Um, uh, to keep them as like just hidden ones, but I'm gonna go to this and I'm gonna try and buff it up and we'll see how we get on. What I'll do is I'll cut back as and when, and if I unlock this, I'm 100% gonna cut back to it for the first time I've ever done it. <laughs> so wish me luck, guys. I will see you in a second. Right, so check this out, gamers. We've finally got a matured riff. This is the first time I've ever done this, first time I've seen this text. Look at this art, oh, so good. Let's read this. The rift hovering over the ruins of Steam has at last eaten its fill. It hangs in the air as a permanent mark of the living void, devouring the light of the sun and stars. Within, the world has been fundamentally transformed. There is no light, no life, no stone or water, neither atoms nor particles, not even the most fundamental of forces. There is only the void. That's so cool. What has been established, right? And that's so the supper can complete this with one turn to spare. So we'll just talk about this very quick. So this, I think, is the primary mechanism, if you like, of this particular god. So. The heroes were trying to come and close this. Now I think the developer, Ura, um, or the mod creator, I guess I should say, forgive me, but the mod creator, Ura, has put in this thing so that if it's in shadow, the location, it is harder for the heroes to seal. And that's a massive, massive use because they were doing it previously in like three to five turns. Yeah, it was so quick. And I didn't have time to react. You can see my um, Trixie's is hanging out here. She's just chilling. She's basically batting back any heroes that try and do this. Um, luckily, it looks like I've just had a mage. I've had this mage attempt it, Dortia, and I've had another dude who had no minions, so I assume he was a mage also. Let's see, who's this guy? Yeah, so it looks like mages prefer this task, which is good, because again, they're easy to bat away, but... Um, so yeah, I'll set those, set those heroes pack in. Once it gets to 300%, you get this, this world rupture. What's... Oh, it's just that's it now. There's no modifiers of nothing. Well, it's empty, isn't it, I suppose? Nothing. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so now this is this. Now this is where I can use these powers, the gaze into the void, surge in darkness and drain warmth. I think I'm going to drop maybe one, like two of these. So do you want madness? Do you want... It's already in shadows. So madness. Madness. And maybe... 
warmth. Why not? Let's just see what happens with this. Um, are they going to appear on here as a modifier? Oh yeah, they are. Four madness to locations every turn. Sweet. Real bushes reducing temperature with surroundings and say for how much? Adjacent locations every turn. One, two, three, four. Oh, they're going to go crazy though. In like five turns, but whatever. It's still good. So I'm really happy to get that out, guys. First time I've ever seen the World Rock shirt and it looks so beautiful. The art is fantastic. The text is brilliant. Finally, we can use some of these powers. But you can see if what I basically did there was sit my supplicant on it. He had five law plus one because there's a challenge there you can do where you can gain an extra law. Uh, I, I can't show you until I get a um, hungry rift, but there's a challenge you can do one turn, gain an extra law, right? You sit there and you just go back, 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 and you start basically opening it up. Heroes have come, I've got two, back them away as best you can. Uh, just focus fire it, get it in, and then once it's in, it's locked in there, because they can't mess with it anymore, which is sweet. So we're going to cause some madness around here. What I'll do is I'll um, play a bit more. I'll probably come back if either I win the game or we get to turn 400-ish, right? And I'll cut back, guys. But uh, yeah, super hyped to get this out and uh, very much enjoying this map. Okay, guys, this is just too cool to leave out. So the gods finally awoken here. And look at this, this living, this text for the living void here. So the cosmos weep as the living void pours in through its gateways and the world collapses into nothingness. The energies consumed by this dissolution of reality will only fuel further consumption until only the living void remains. So the maximum power is increased to 10, sweet. And we get um, vacuum collapse, the final uh, power here. So the great wound and every world rupture returns its surroundings further out each time. So I'm guessing it spreads first one step, then two, etc., into the living void, refunding one power for each location that releases void. Only your agents and the chosen one can survive in the living void. Okay, so let's just quickly check this out because I'm hoping I've got the power to do this right away. Let's just have a look at this. Use power. Oh, it's 10 power gutted, so one more power. I did stock a bit, as you can see, just in case this was the case. So let's just wait a second. We'll get it to now. Go to dismiss that. I'm not about that. You need to lay low, mate. Oh dear, really. We don't see any of this. Here we are, 10, right? Get away. So I've got quite an interesting game state here. You can see World Pain is 100, four, four, turn 403, victory 76%. So I was doing pretty well. I've only got two uh, agents as well at a six, and I've lost quite a few because I've got zero recruitment points. So this, as, as I suspected, the Living Void is, and I'll go through this in more detail later, but the Living Void is very, very um, profile and menace intensive. You almost have to have agents dedicated to just ruining um, the heroes, basically. So I had to have a trick to do who was totally buffed out. I needed a... I've gone, I've gone into scraps with literally everyone, basically. I've had tricksters, I've had like three or four warlords fighting, I've had hierophants in desperation, like anything pretty much. So it is very, very intense on the old um, profile of Menace, and because of that you do get through a lot of agents. But let's, so I thought I'd lost this. Right? Earlier I was like, oh man, this looks like a loss, but then I managed to get this world rupture. I got this one here. This one you've seen me get already. So I've got three world ruptures and the great wound. I think this is going to be fairly powerful. Let's check this out back in clubs. Okay, well, hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to do on this one because this is probably the most deadly. Maybe here. One of these points. They're all pretty good. Let's do it on this. Vacuum collapse. The world of humanity implodes in on itself, giving way to the living void. Priorium citadel is consumed by the tidal wave of annihilation. There are no more stones, no more particles, no more fires, no more snow, and no more humans. In Priorium citadel, there is only us. They were the first, but they will not be the last. Nice. So I seem to have got a couple of power back there. Is, did anything happen here as well? Let's just zoom in on this because this looks absolutely dope. Oh yes, we've got this one too, look. Okay, we've got a couple here. These are ones. Look at this. Oh, even the map's changing with the living voice growing. Okay, so I think... Right, what I'll do is let me just... I think I know how this is going to play out, but I'm just going to... We'll see. I'm going to skip ahead to where hopefully I either win or lose. We'll see if we get to 500 and I'll tell you um, how I got on, what I think the strengths of this is. I will do a bit of a summary uh, and then I'll close the video. Right, I'll see you in a second. 
Okay guys, so I've won the game here. Uh, I'm just going to replay this uh, the game step for you. You can see there, turn 4 through 7. And this is the replay of me winning the game. So, as I've sort of said really, I focused on, in this game, mostly Shadow Spread. Then I went a little bit into Madness. I um, was quite aggressive with my agents. A lot more aggressive than I'd normally be. Just to get those rifts opened. And then once you get to the... Um, once you get to the fully mature rifts, they're called, um, and you start unleashing those, uh, just spreading the void, things just really start to fall fall down pretty quick for humanity, which is great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a super, super interesting uh, god, this one. Really, really big. Look at all these deaths. Look at this. Death, 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 death. See how many I lost? That was just defending rifts, trying to get these rifts open. And as you can see, they've got a ton of shadow. I think the grey is... Um, the grey there, well, it looks like the chosen one died, but the grey, I believe, is where I've spread the the void. So let's just let's just dismiss this a second. So you can see the game state here. I'm going to see if I can continue a few more times. So I want to show you this. What happens to this in practice? Look, this is the living void, right? So you do that. You've seen me do that ability, the um, vacuum collapse, and it slowly spreads. So I've linked these two, and I love. Look at this effect is so good. The map is literally turning to the void. I love this. I really love this actually. So the victory, let's take a look at the victory percentage. So we needed 200 points to win. I had zero points from Dark Empire, makes sense. Insane and then Shadowed Rulers and Heroes, I had eight of them. Sorry, eight points, I had four. You get two points per. Insane Rulers and Heroes uh, was two, two of each, one point each. In Shadow Percentage Population, was 80.9 points, so that's a lot of population in Shadow here, like 2.5 times 32%. And then look at the population destroyed, 33%, so 84 uh, points there for my victory was either in Shadow population or destroyed population, which I quite like. Uh, and then I got a bit of a bonus. Actually, no, it's a pretty big bonus. Deep on Cities were just doing work by themselves, to be honest, just while I was doing my own bits. Uh, 26 points there, which is nothing to sniff at. So you can see a lot of the the victory is from in shadow lands and from population destroyed and this the living void destroys stuff right no, make no mistake about it and it's a really interesting let's just get to 10 again so you can see this one spot he's expanding his rift we're not going to bother doing that anymore he's going to keep expanding the rift um almost we could do another one i'll see if we can get the whole a bit more of the map a bit more voided out uh let's try and get the money okay whatever you just keep exploring the ruins, mate. Got temper. Use it again. Vacuum collapse. Use it on any of these. It works around all of them, as we've seen. So click on any world rupture or the great wound. Press it. Oh, look at this now. Oh, gosh, the map though. Destroyed 50% of the population. Destroyed. I love this. And by the way, if heroes go into this, they just they die. Right? They're dead. That's it. They're done. Um. Okay. Let's talk about this god. What the uh, what the my sort of summary, if you like, and what I think about this god in a in a sort of nutshell. So, the first thing to say is I love it. Thematically, fantastic. The it's challenging as a god, a lot more challenging than perhaps some of the others, even in the base game. But that isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you want a bit more of a challenge, this truly does push you. I feel anyway to the limits of your your playability. Um, and you've got to play a bit differently, like all the gods you've seen so far that are modded. You've got to play a bit differently to what you would normally with the gods. So like subtlety, yeah, it's great, but you don't rely on it as much. Your intrigue game is less. Your might and your straight up attacking and killing heroes game has to be stronger. You also need a lot of lore to get those rifts to completion. So the things that I like about this god is that thematically it's fantastic, it's challenging, it's very very fun, it's epic seeing the map just get ruined like, look at this, I mean what else can do this? It's literally eating the map, I love this, this is, I, I can't describe how much I love this. Um, and it's worth saying actually, that the reason this, this video, I've recorded almost all of it, um, apart from the, this last segment really, the reason why it's been delayed, it was supposed to be released last week, but the reason it's been a bit delayed is because there was a bug. So I had this bug where if somebody went into a living void, my agent or a hero would crash again. And I think a few people had it on the Discord. I saw a couple of people with the same thing. And the developer, bless him, um, Uralv, has just been... I need to say this properly. Uravolv, that's right, Uravolv, has been 
working really diligently to get it sorted and he's finally fixed it now so like well done that's a really really great tech. like congratulations on doing that it's must have been a lot of work and he did really well to get it done so the developer the mod creator here is very keen on making sure everything here works perfectly and i think from now it does this will be it now so as i say it offers a very unique and different challenge to normal what don't i like about this God, well, most of the mechanics, look at this, let me show the powers real quick. They almost, apart from Enervate, which is the first one you get, and as we know, really, that's first for heroes in the later game, but it's in the mid to late game, so it's, it's useful throughout, but primarily, that is for um, early game, when you get it, it's for using on orcs, which I find peculiar. I wish it said hero or orc, might there, or, you know, upstarts might to one. You get this, then you get Consume Heat, Rising Void, Path of Destruction, and a Road Mind, right? Consume Heat and Rising Void only affect hidden void stones. Take a void stone and put it in location, that's all they do. Path of Destruction and a Road Mind only affect void stones that have been placed into Heroes or Rules and Ventures. So you need to use void stones for all of these. Then you have Open Rift that will open a hidden void stone and turn it into the Hungry Rift that you can then turn into a um, World Rupture. Now, or a mature rift, or yeah, world rupture it's called. So, and then you have these three powers, or four powers, I guess, with vacuum flaps that are for world ruptures. You can gaze into the void, surging darkness, drain warm, the vacuum flaps, yeah. The, it's all very, you have to have, and I mean, it's, it's obviously done intentionally. The creator wants you to use the abilities of the god, right? But it feels like the risk reward is a little bit out at present, so. Personally, I quite enjoy just having a load of hidden void stones um, and doing Rise of Void on them permanently, just spreading shadow, crazy. And I think that's actually the easiest way to win with this card. Opening them up and then doing this stuff, while very strong as you saw, is super, super, super risky. Like they can be sealed all of a sudden by heroes. So they can be sealed with the hungry by any hero. Primarily mages seem to do it. Um, the chosen one can seal the world ruptures and will. Um, and it's such an investment to get to to these, to these world ruptures. Like there was a few times where I was genuinely like, I'm not going to win this game. I was really, really like, and it, I wouldn't say luck, but it was a lot of just having to sacrifice agent after agent after agent after agent into the grinder just to get to this. This is why I've only got a few agents right now. Um, you know, turn four, four, four. I've only got a full roster. Well, we don't. We've got three. And they've, I've got no recruitment points left, right? They're all gone. So I think maybe another power somewhere around here after a road mine, perhaps it could be used. It just isn't related, basically, to having a void stone or a rift or a rupture or whatever. Just something different. Maybe a power to help spread rifts, to help the hungry rifts grow quicker. Maybe a power to um, help infiltrate a location. Uh, I'm just sort of spitballing here, but just something that isn't necessarily related to these and helps with them. I also think, in terms of feedback, that perhaps the, the maybe I don't know the the world ruptures are great, but you almost need more than one of them to keep the chosen one busy, or they're just going to keep. I found they just keep trying to close it, and that is a big, you know, tough chosen ones. But it's hard to keep them. You know, it's hard to keep them at bay, basically. So that was really challenging. Until I got a couple over, and then suddenly it was bushy, whatever. It was a bit more. Ch they were struggling where to go, as it were. They didn't know which one to go to, and it kind of delayed them. Um, I was also quite lucky that I had a, an orc slayer or something chosen one. Right? If there had been a mediator, this could have been a very, very different game, a very bad game for me. Um, so I think maybe having powers or some way to make them open quicker. It just feels a bit. I don't mean this to be negative, but it just feels a bit grindy. Like I've had this, so you know, my, my courtier with six law rights, seven when he's got the stair deep buff, has been doing this like three or four times, and it's only at 184%. It's got to get to 300 to open. So this will probably take him like eight to ten. Um, so it goes up by, I think, yes, yeah, so it's, like, it's dropping 1.4% per turn. It takes him. Uh, for five turns, right, to complete this challenge. Um, so in that time, it's lost five, you know, plus the point four or whatever. So 
whatever that is, right? Like seven, I want to say. It, it's lost quite a big percentage, and then it only increases when you complete this task by, I think it's 30, I want to say. 40%? Which ain't a great massive, oh, that's not a big net gain for me. I would prefer to see this, like, increase to 80% gain or something. Make it, um, you know, increase maybe the profile of Menace, uh, you know, to suit, and maybe make it slightly more challenging, so 30 to 35, 40 max, I would say, to do this. That's what I think should happen, so it's a bit quicker, it's less of a drag, because when they're doing this, you basically have to keep coming down here and stopping people like Sir Ito Abuse, sealing the rift like he's doing that, right? You have to come down and do bonk them. And every time you do that, you gain profile, you gain menace, and then eventually your agents get killed, which is exactly what I saw. And don't get me wrong, I think that's the way, in some respects, this god is meant to be played, but it... I don't know, it, uh, some people will probably really enjoy this, but for me, I found I didn't find it as engaged as it could be. I found it... Boring is the wrong word, but I wasn't as engaged when I'm just doing open rupture, open rupture, open rupture, open rupture, open, over and over and over again and then every so often I'd have to get someone over to smack a hero away that was trying to deal with it and I say smack away, really what I mean is just interrupt them um, and it did feel a little bit rng -y as well to a point so that's one thing I'd potentially change up um, but it's it's great, it's really really fun game as you, 100, obviously like all the bad gods you've got to get this but this is I very much enjoy this, very, very much. I might give this, um, I might give this another few goes actually, another few plays and see if I could do some different tactics with it, but yeah, I, I really, really enjoy how this plays, how this works and the general mechanics around it. I think it's quite map dependent as well, it's probably one of the things I should mention, so the map can make a big difference. If the world which happens to be nowhere useful, great room for giving your initial starting point. If this is nowhere useful, or it's just like, you know, disconnected from everything, easy to get to. That can be a pain because you've got to jaunt over somewhere, drop the thing, make your world rupture, right? And it, it, that can be a little bit of a pain as well. So maybe trying to make it a bit less map dependent, have the great wound spawn within a certain distance from society. Or I think if you play this, for example, on a um, island map, it might be more challenging. Uh, but I, it could just be me, maybe not actually, because the heroes are probably finding just as difficult to get to your world ruptures as you would. Remains to be seen, I have to do some more testing, but I do think it's quite map dependent, it's very chosen one dependent, different chosen ones can have a big, big impact on what, um, on how well you do in the game I think, and like I say it's better if the combat focused in a way, because it saves you, you don't have to worry as much about them doing the, the seal, because I mean, the chosen one I think in mine had like two lore, right, so when they were trying to seal the rift it took them like ten turns, so I could get there and do things with them. Um, maybe even a power, I'll tell you what would be useful, a power that just delayed the sealing of the rift, right? You just pressed it and it, I don't know, not reset the progress, but it took 10 off or something, just to buy you a little bit of time. Maybe have it cost 2 or something, just so it can't be spammed. Um, or you know, 3 or anything, right? But just something to give you a bit more time I think would be really useful. Um, these are really, really minor quibbles though guys, this, this Mardi God is absolutely fantastic, it's another 10 out of 10, 100% worth getting. I'm re uh, thematically, I think it's probably the most sort of crafty and God in the game at the minute. Um, so yeah, get it, play it, there'll be a link in the description as always for these gods. Get it, play it, um, enjoy it, and uh, absolutely have fun with it guys like I have. So, I'm going to stop the video there, it's probably going on way too long as it is. As always, thank you for watching. If you like what you see, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more, um, please do subscribe to the channel if you're not already. If you'd like to comment and all that good stuff, let's, you know, if you, what do you think about the Void God? Have you played with them? How did you find them? Did you enjoy them? Did you not? You know, what, any feedback is useful, we can try and pass it on to the uh, to Ura. Um, yeah, if you wish to become a channel member, you could do all that good stuff too. There's a link somewhere. I don't know, on the description or something where you can do that if you're interested. Thank you again to my member that I can for uh, continuing to support me. Very, very much appreciated. And I will hopefully see you on the next video. Take care.